Here is the reality of my business is doing $50,000 a month at the age of 19. My name is Scott Gleason Kim. I'm just from a smaller town in Ohio. No, I didn't have a fucking trust fund. I didn't have any of that. Don't get me wrong. I had the perfect life growing up, but I didn't come from millions of dollars. So the reality of it is I've been working for years on end to even make this possible. When I was 15, I started my first online business. It was a drop shipping store. I think I was trying to sell watches. I, I didn't know anything about watches, but I thought I could drop ship watches and make a ton of money. Maybe I could have. I just didn't know a lot at the time. I'd be lying if I said I learned a lot from that situation. I kind of just went into it blind. But I'm really glad I didn't stop after trying to do drop shipping for a while. I had an SMMA that didn't really work out. I eventually landed on Amazon reselling, did hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales doing that. Realized reselling is a wagey job and you can't ever get rich doing it. And then I started my own brands and now we're making more money than ever. And now I help thousands of people on the internet do it as well. We have 500 plus people in our free community. First link down below, 10 plus hours of free course and two calls a week. And also I have dozens and dozens of private students. I started in high school. I was still making no money. My, like my, my hustle back then was I had a landscaping business on the side and I also did DoorDash. So that was how I kind of made my, my money to sustain myself. Like I had no fucking expenses. Like I lived with my parents, but I, that's how I like had money for food. And I had a girlfriend at the time, surprisingly expensive for a, for like a 15, 16 year old. But you know, I was trying to my online businesses. I was blowing money like it was nothing I remember like my friends would tell me like you're fucking stupid for for trying to start your online business I was trying to start drop shipping and I was like 14 15 I wasted like 200 bucks just all in like it wasn't a lot of money but at the time it was and all my friends are like oh you're stupid like why would you do that da, 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 da. you just wasted money I never listened to them I'm so glad I never did because like I would have ruined my entrepreneurial experience and I'm honestly surprised I didn't based on the people I surround myself with but I kept on pushing guys I kept on trying new things like I tried job shipping. If I suck with job shipping, it probably would have worked out. I just didn't stick with it. I was just bouncing around to shit. It just wasn't smart. Like you need to just focus on one thing. But my first like real money came when I was reselling on Amazon. But the problem was I was doing all the work. So I was prepping all of my products. I was sourcing all my products. I was doing everything. I was shipping it all out and I was running the entire business online too. So it was just so much work, especially me being in high school at the time, trying to do my ed education. I was the captain of the varsity soccer team. I had a girlfriend at the time. It was just a lot of shit to handle. So I realized I'm like, all right, I got to do something more leverageable. I started private label, which is basically just owning your own brands. You see products and brands that are already doing well on Amazon and you take inspiration from them go find a manufacturer who can make it for you. And you put your own branding and your own spend on things. So I did that and my margins increased super fast and my work decreased a ton. I don't even touch my inventory anymore. Amazon handles it all. That's how I landed on Amazon. And we've done hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars since my senior year, I took college classes in high school. So I basically finished my freshman year of college in high school. This past year, I went to Ohio State for like two semesters and dropped out of the top five logistics program in the country. I just do my businesses full time. You know, we have label leverage and we have all of our private label brands. The reality, I, I'll get into the reality now. You know, it, it wasn't easy. I had to come up like I didn't make money for two years, at least two, two and a half years. I lost money net negative for so long just because I didn't know what I was doing. I was just trying new things. I was bouncing around. I was just doing too much shit. That was the problem. Like, I was not focused at all. And I wish I listened to the older people around me. Like all of the people who had more money than me were like, Scott, just focus on one thing. And I never listened to him. I don't know why. Now I realize the importance of focus. You get what you focus on boys and girls. And please, if you're younger than me, or maybe if you're not, maybe you just have less business experience than me. Please just understand one thing. You get what you focus on. So focus on one business model, get very good at it and repeat the process until you make millions of dollars. The reality of it is like, yeah, I'm not chilling guys. Like I don't have a Lambo. I don't have a penthouse. Will I have those? Absolutely. I I'm being candid with you. Like I just reinvest basically all my money back into growth. Like I don't need a ton of money right now. I'd rather sacrifice a little bit of money. Like what I have is in grand scheme, guys, a very little amount of money. Even if you do 50K a month, like you have no money. I'm trying to grow my money by investing it in my companies so I can have that penthouse, so I can have that Lambo, so I can do whatever I want. In the beginning, guys, when I was first starting my businesses, when I was doing the dropshipping, when I was doing the SMA, when I was doing the reselling, I was working a lot. I mean, like I still work a lot. I still work maybe 10, 12 hours a day sometimes. But now at the point where we're kind of getting settled in, and I'm not saying settled in, we're like, we're chilling now, but we're getting things optimized. We're building our team larger. 
so I'm at the point now where, yeah, I have lots of work to do, but it's more of just, I have to do the bigger things. I just have to do the creative things. Like, like my biggest job guys at, at the moment is how do I build new brands? How do I do product development? How do I create brands that resonate with people and sell on Amazon? That's my main job. My second job is creating content on here. My majority of my day is just me creating. I'm going to be honest. I, I've wanted to say this for a while somewhere. I haven't said it though, because I didn't put out a story or anything, but I have been focusing on so heavily the last like six, seven months on creating so much for the masses to consume. I create so the masses can consume because that's how you make your money. You create a product or you create a service or you create something that people love to consume and then you will make money. Whether that's a product for me, whether that's a video for me, I am always creating the best I can. I'm always trying to be extremely creative. It didn't always used to be like that. I always used to do everything in my business. I did everything. I I'm telling you every single job, I wore every hat. Now I don't have to. Yeah, I still wear a lot of hats, but I'm nowhere near where I was and I have a quite a bit lower workload. My life, I'm, I'm gonna be very candid with you. I wake up 7.30, 8, and I'm not waking up crazy early anymore. I just hop in the shower. I work for maybe 45 minutes. I head to the gym. I come back from the gym, shower, eat lunch, and then I'm working pretty much the rest of the day. So maybe five, six, then I eat dinner again and I work until bedtime. So like I'm always working guys, to be honest, unless I have somewhere I'm going or something I'm doing, but I'm genuinely always trying to work just because I, I love obsessing over something. Like it makes me feel good. If I'm not personally always chasing something or pursue greatness at some point, I'm going to be extremely mentally ill. And when I say mentally ill, I never do anything like you're thinking. I would have no clue what to do with myself. I always have to be learning or doing or just staying busy. It just has to be done. Am I in the clubs fucking popping bottles, guys, at 19 years old? I'm not. You know, I, I'm not at all. I'm just taking quite honestly the boring route. I'm just reinvesting my money back into my businesses so they can grow even faster so I can have the nice things much faster. When people online make their first money, maybe you make a hundred grand, like say you make your first a hundred G's or whatever, like they're so quick to go blow that money. Like it's not your money, bro. It's not yours. It's, it's, it's your expenses for a couple years, dude. Like you need to buckle down and make some real money because a hundred G's is nothing. So you should use that to survive. So you're not focused on survival. So you can focus on building. I think the difference between me and the average 19 year old is just that I took action. I did what people wanted to do. I, I just did it. Like I just said, fuck it. Or what I have to lose. I just did it. Like I was not scared to start the business. I was not scared to start my YouTube channel. I just did things. And quite honestly, it is very easy if you just show up every day and do things. You don't even have to work that hard. You just have to try and take more risks than people. I have failed more times than most of you have even tried. And that's not a shot at you. I'm just saying like it takes a good amount of failure. It takes a good amount of attempts in order to win. But one thing I will say is quite odd and weird that I don't really talk about is the social aspect of things. Like no one really treats me that differently. Like I'm not like a celebrity or Superman at all. No one treats me like that. But like it's kind of odd when people ask you like what you do for a living or or your old teachers or your old coaches or like some old friends or I could quite honestly say you know I have all these businesses that do extremely well I'm building a good YouTube following I've done hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars I could say all of that I don't feel like it like honestly I just tell people I'm still in college it's not that I just don't like talking to people which is it's just a weird conversation I think that's almost a good thing you know like I think when you get to a point where you're starting to have to have those weird conversations you're starting to do something in life. Kind of reminded me when Andrew Tate said something like that. He was like, I don't even like telling people what I do because it's just weird. Like I have to explain these things to people that they couldn't even imagine or they, they can't even fathom. I'm starting to get glimpses of that. Like I'll tell people like, oh yeah, we collected 10K today. They'll look at me a little funny. Am I complaining? Absolutely not. But that's just a side effect. Quite honestly, once you do start to make a little bit of money, like I'm not saying I'm rich at all, but people will try to take advantage of you. I'm not going to say who or like when it happened, but people, I can see it when people try to take advantage of me. Even some of my old boys will try to be weird about money. Like I get it. I have more than most 19 year olds, very thankfully, but does it mean I need to pay your bill at everything, bro? That's not how shit works. If I'm sitting with a fucking billionaire, I'm paying for his lunch no matter where we are. But no guys, I mean, I've been working all day today. It's what time is it right now? 
It is about 10 o'clock. I'm probably gonna be filming for the next couple of hours minimum. I'm gonna wake up tomorrow, do the same thing. The only reason I'm, I'm where I'm at today or even still doing this is because I genuinely enjoy it. I think you genuinely have to enjoy business for you to like do it for the long run. If you don't enjoy what you do, I think it's gonna be very hard for you to get good at it. There's so many road bumps. There's so much bullshit you have to deal with. There's so many times where you could quit and it's so easy to quit, right? It's so easy to quit if you want, but you have to make it through. You have to persevere and not give up. It, it's all it takes is just showing up every day, even though it's hard and you don't want to. That's truly what I believe has, has set me apart just because I, I haven't stopped showing up. I've just showed up every day. I've just done what I need to do every single day, even if it's a little bit, even if I improve by 0.01%, I'm getting better. Right? And that compounds over time. I always had this thing in sports. Like I would always just try to get 1% better every day. If you get 1% better every day over 365 days, you get 365% better over a year. Pretty damn good. If you try to make 1% more money every single day, dude, you're going to triple your income in a year. So it's, it's literally just think about like daily basis. Just think about on the daily basis. You don't have to think a year out. You don't have to think three years out. Like obviously you have to have your life kind of planned out think about and focus on today. That is the best advice I can give to anybody is just focus on the daily basis. What am I getting done? What output am I having on a daily basis? And don't confuse busy work with productivity, guys. That's one thing I see. Like for the longest time, I thought if I just sat on my computer checking emails all day, I would be extremely productive and get a bunch done. No, you have to have output that pushes the needle forward. So every day now I'm focused on what produces the highest return every single day. For me right now, it's making content and building brands. I don't really try to impress anybody. You know, I, I think I just like doing what I like. And that's one of the things that I've had to learn, especially because I've always kind of fallen victim for liking what other people like. I'm not, you, you can like what other people like, but I always let other people's desires control my desires. And that's one thing I'm glad I sort of strayed away from. Now I know what type of life I want and I'm going to go do my life. You know, if, if this guy wants that for me, fuck him. I want what I want. I'm going to do what I want on a daily basis. I'm going to buy what car I want. I'm going to live where I want. I'm going to do on a daily basis what I want. Not what Sally wants, not what John wants, not what you want. I'm doing what I want. And I think that mentality sort of is a good thing for entrepreneurship. Like you kind of have to go against what people want for you. Genuinely, people will probably, especially if you're from like a small town or, you know, not maybe a crazy entrepreneurial background, like people will genuinely feel uncomfortable with you trying to break out of the matrix or start your own business. When I had my lawn care business back in high school, I would cut grass for an old lady. And you know, she was a very educated woman. She went to college for, and probably had multiple, multiple degrees. And I was telling her about my business. I was just trying to get it off the ground. And she basically just shit on it and said, don't do that. Just go to school and you'll make more money. And I'm so glad I didn't listen to her because thinking about it today, she had no money. She was fucking poor dude. And her kids didn't like her. And I'm not like throwing shots. I'm just saying, be careful who you listen to. The thing I always did well was I listened to the people I wanted to be like. like if I had my fucking teacher scream in my ear, oh, you got to do this and this and this, like I wouldn't listen to them because I didn't want to be like my teacher. No offense, my teachers can live their life, but I didn't want their life. I always wanted to be my own person. I'm a free fucking soul. I always wanted to have a nice car. I always wanted to never worry about money. I wanted to live where I want to live, fly where I want to fly, eat what I want to eat, take care of the people I love, do what I want without any restrictions. So I listened to people who had that and it's worked out well for me. I genuinely isolated myself for years. I'm not saying you should do it, but I kind of isolated myself for a while just listening to people I wanted to listen to. So if you resonate with me at all, feel free to listen more. <laughs> I won't complain, but don't overdo it at all on the consumption. And I think 99% of the time you need to be creating, whether that's through your social media, whether that's for, you know, any brands you're launching or any products you're creating or any services you're creating, you know, whatever it is, you need to be creating 99% of the day that will have the highest ROI for you. I never got to experience like the real college experience. So yeah, I shit on college a lot and I don't go anymore. I dropped out towards the end of the semester. I was kind of like fiending for like a side quest. I, this is just candid, like very honest with you. Like I kind of wanted to go to college just to have a little bit of like college experience, not like necessarily like, classes and shit, all the parties and all that bullshit. And then I kind of realized, man, I'm like, you know, that's not your path, bro. Like I, like I kind of wanted it. I lusted for it in, in the moment, but I thought about it more. I'm like, you haven't wanted that the last 
five years. So like, why do you want it now? Is it doing any good for your life? No. Do you enjoy your life genuinely on a daily basis, Scott? Absolutely. So there's nothing you should change. By the way, like I'm just going to plug my mentorship a little bit here. You know, if you want the fastest way to success, I'm just going to talk about mentors right now. Like I've had mentors. I paid thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for mentors and courses and things like that. You know, I think it was the best investment I ever made just because it's the fast track to success. If you have someone who's done something, you need to listen to them. You know, like they've done it. They'll tell you how they did it. And, and that's the fastest way to get something done. Paying for information is a real thing. It's pay to play out here, to be honest. Like there are a lot of things that are not put on YouTube or a lot of things that are not put in books that you simply need to just get and extract from a human's brain. Like some of you guys will be like, oh, everything you need is on YouTube. It's going to be hard to find, bro. That's all I'm saying. Some of the things that go on in our business on a daily basis, some of the things I've learned in my journey that I teach to my students, you couldn't even write on paper, brother. We refuse to write it on paper. You know, our team and I have a group chat just for ideas, just for hardships, actually. So like if we ever go some through some really hard shit or really tough problem, you know, we'll, we'll write it down so we can teach it to our students and make sure we cover that. We only write down some things because we were talking the other day and we're like, all right, none of this goes on paper. Only, only the sauce. The sauce is up here. The sauce is forever in our brain. The juice is on paper. The juice is in the course. The juice is on the videos. The juice is in the first link down below. Free course, 10 plus hours, two calls every week. A sauce can only be extracted human to human. You can't learn that shit in a book. You can't learn that shit in a journal. So, you know, I've had mentors that are worth hundreds of millions of dollars and it's it's really benefited me. If you would have any interest, shoot me a DM on Instagram. You know, maybe you wanna to learn to cook. Go find someone who knows how to cook. Go to the best chef in your city and pay him. The experience and the knowledge you have in your brain is irreplaceable. You can't put a price on that. I coach people, but I need a coach as well. And my coach will have a coach and that coach will have a coach. There's just levels to this game, guys. My name is Scott Gleason Camp. I appreciate you watching. Please subscribe and I will see you in the next video.